All right, so this week I want to talk about three moves that I believe you should be making in these markets. And if you're following uh, finance, stock market, the investment world through the eyes of mainstream media, then these moves are going to seem contrarian. However, if you're following us and you know the way that we think, then all of this is going to make complete and 100% sense. So uh, before I begin, I just want to make it clear, this is opinion, not advice. And um, so just, you know, understand that. All right. So if I go and look at what's like been going up for the last several weeks, maybe even a month, uh, it's oil and it's energy stocks. And actually the, the stock market, uh, these stocks are going up in a big way. And many people may be thinking, oh my goodness, oil prices are going to go to 100. I should go buy a barrel full of oil stocks. And I would tell you that the move to actually make right now is to sell oil stocks and buy into battery stocks. That's right. In other words, you know, like batteries that go into Tesla cars. I mean, those are the stocks in my judgment, my opinion that you should buy. And here's why. So let's look at the setup first. Oil and energy prices there at like five, six year highs. Oil, when I last checked, was something like $80, $85. If you go to your gas station, it's nearly $3 a gallon. So in other words, I mean, oil prices are genuinely quite high. And oil stocks are also at highs. And just remember, in 2020, oil for a little while traded at a negative price. So this is a big snapback from what happened in the COVID crash in 2020. But you know one thing that as you go and look at these big oil companies, whether you're looking at Royal Dutch or any of these, none of them are really planning to increase their capacity. And you know why? And that's because they all know something that I believe that most people know and the markets certainly know because it's acting like it, certainly in terms of the people that are in it for the long term and you know everything that we do for our services from profits unlimited on uh, all of our services we are long term oriented minimum 1 to 3 years which they all know that carbon based energy fossil fuel based energy is going away even saudi arabia i saw an article that says they want to be fossil fuel carbon uh energy free by the year 2050 that's just 30 years from now we're talking about the the, the country with the largest oil reserves on earth is talking about going carbon free. So this is for all practical purposes, a done deal. We are moving on from, from carbon-based energy, from fossil fuel-based energy. And um, these high prices that you're seeing for oil and natural gas and for gasoline, it is actually going to accelerate the investment into what we call new energy. And you can check out my video from last week where I go into the entire new energy complex and all the various opportunities that are available to people and that we across our services from Profits Unlimited on down are all in on. And if you want to uh, check into Profits Unlimited, actually this month, we're going to add a battery stock that is revolutionary and it has actually been a dream of people to actually create this kind of a battery. And if you're interested in checking out that, my amazing colleagues, Amber and Jacqueline, are working on this issue. And it'll be out pretty soon. So if you want to subscribe, click on these strong hands here, and it will send you to a ad uh, telling you about Profits Unlimited. All right. So I would tell you, if you're looking at the market today, the right place to be is, uh, is in batteries primarily, because this is going to be sort of like the replacement technology that really matters, because battery technology has sort of sat still for a very, very long time, really essentially until Tesla came in. And then a lot of money uh, that Tesla has spent on um, lithium ion batteries and now there are a number of other companies that are actively going at this opportunity and are making big headway. They are starting to really start to plan to put up very large amounts of, of capacity to build batteries and scale, which means that sooner rather than later, the prices of these company stocks are going to get bid up because 
making a commitment to a battery plant is a long-term commitment. You are planning to put up a plant that's gonna produce batteries for years and years to come. And you're gonna get commitments from customers well ahead of that. And stock market investors are gonna look at that and start to discount that and anticipate where these companies are going to be in terms of revenues, in terms of sales, many years out and discount it. No different than Tesla, where today it's got billions and billions of dollars worth of sales. However, its stock market capitalization and its stock market value anticipated where it is today, where it is the dominant maker of electric vehicles around the world. So batteries are definitely one of the places where you definitely should be looking at because it is going to replace and in effect to wipe out the old world of carbon-based energy and, and fossil fuel-based energy. A second place where we're participating in across our services is this new paradigm that comes with new energy, which is that you need software, you need uh, data, and you need information to optimize all the different sources of energy because no longer is energy just coming from one source. So for example, I've got solar panels on my roof, but I also use the grid from time to time. Uh, and the grid themselves, in other words, the utility company themselves, they no longer just rely on a plant. They rely on solar power. They rely on wind. They may even rely on wave power. So they've got many different sources and they've got to optimize it in different ways because obviously the sun doesn't shine all the time and neither does the wind blow all the time. So you've got to figure out how to sort of optimize and make efficient this new chain of, of energy sources. And for that, you need software. And we've got an amazing company, incredible company in Profits Unlimited that actually does this. They coordinate batteries from uh, all these different utilities that are putting up huge battery, uh, utility scale batteries around the world. However, it does need to be optimized because sometimes, uh, uh, you don't need it. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you need a lot of it. Sometimes you need very little of it. And software, data, and information are the key to actually getting this whole new system get working. And the third place I would tell you where you should be focused on as money uh, really starts to go long-term money, which is where all the big money is made. I mean, I, I know that people chase short-term returns, but I have zero interest in that. And if you're looking for that, our channel is like 100% wrong for you. The other place that long-term money is going for uh, is less well-known energy sources uh, like hydrogen and nuclear, where there are, again, many years of research and development that are now coming to fruition in commercial development and in Profits Unlimited, where we're very big on this new energy theme because energy is absolutely critical to human life. I mean, it's fundamental. I mean, just think about everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Your house, it runs on energy. Your car, it runs on energy. Um, and all of the other aspects of our life, absolutely 100% depend on energy. So there's a reason why uh, for a long period of time, the energy companies were among the biggest companies in the world. And I believe that many of the companies we have in Profits Unlimited are going to arrive in the same place, but over time, that's gonna be instant, it's gonna take some time, and they will completely wipe out and replace uh, the old energy sector, America 1.0 energy sector of Exxon Mobil and others. So that's one of the moves that I would be making right now that is contrary to what a lot of what people are probably writing about uh, and talking about if you're following regular media, and perhaps even some of my, uh, some of the folks that uh, are on with my, my current publisher, Banyan Hill, they, they probably may be saying the same thing. So obviously I disagree with them because I know sometimes people think that I have some relationship with them when we just have the same publisher. We have our own independent views uh, and they might have theirs and I have mine. So the second place that I have a very different view of what I believe people should be doing versus what you would be reading in the Wall Street Journal and other places is about inflation and interest rates. Now, if it were me, I would be, if I was forced to buy something that was sort of income oriented, I would prefer to buy bonds uh, over dividend stocks or these really these, I call them dividend and, and stock buyback hogs. In other words, these are companies that really are, 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 are borrowing money to pay out dividends and buy back stock. 
they're generally what we call America 1.0 and old world stocks. And this is obviously quite contrarian because I saw Jack Dorsey, who is the uh, CEO of Square and Twitter, talk about that hyperinflation is something that might happen in the US. And I would say I give that a zero possibility. Uh, for sure, headline inflation right now is high and interest rates for the 10-year bond, while not as high as where they were pre-pandemic, they're, they're, they're at like a multi-month high. Um, and there's once again a kind of panic about inflation. And I would tell you that this panic is bogus. I, I believe it's complete BS. Uh, and the reason for this is because I spend nearly all of my time focusing on these new technologies. Uh, many of you know me for the Internet of Things, blockchain, we have artificial intelligence, and I've been telling you previously about uh, new energy. And the key to all of these technologies is that they are getting, getting cheaper by the day because they are still scaling up. In other words, uh, as we produce more and more of it, the per unit cost is going to go into decline. Now, this is the reverse of most of these companies that are paying out dividends. And I'll say one exception here is the semiconductor stocks. And these companies, if you go and look at their balance sheet, you will see that they have really skyrocketed their borrowing to, to buy back stock, to pay dividends. Um, and they are doing this instead of reinvesting their money into innovation, which would pay off over time. And instead they're supporting their stock at very high prices by buying into it. And then on top of that, to make things work, they're also make, make things worse. Uh, they're also paying very, very high dividends. I believe this is really going to come back to punish them in a very, very big way. And I believe that clock is ticking and being to tick faster and faster. So the underlying basis for what I, I'm talking about is that as prices are currently going up for what I'll call legacy or old world products and services, uh, there is an acceleration going on into the adoption of new innovation technologies. In other words, the high prices that you are seeing for these old world and legacy products and services is driving a, a, a push to actually adopt innovation technologies faster. And this is a place where you can see, if you're adopting these new technologies, you can see rising returns for your money. In other words, the more you use them, the lower the per unit cost is for whatever you're making or whatever you're doing. And that's an attractive scenario that is going to make business owners invest in that technology. And then uh, people will start to naturally switch over to these products and services because they provide a greater benefit at a lower cost uh, as a result of this innovation. And Ultimately, what is going to happen, and I don't mean ultimately 20 years from now, I mean in the next one, three, five years, the demand for these legacy old world products is going to first slowly and then suddenly just die off. Kind of like the way you've seen Sears and all of these retailers sort of go to zero. You'll see that for categories and entire sectors and industries. Uh, and with that, what you'll see is sort of headline inflation for a spall and then plummet, and then we'll have outright deflation. In other words, a reduction in prices because the investment into these new technologies is gonna drive prices lower and lower. And what that will do is make interest rates go down and there is an inverse impact with interest rates and bond prices as interest rates go down, bond prices will go up. And then for these America 1.0 uh, dividend and stock buyback hogs, uh, unfortunately, what I foresee is really them going to zero because um, this debt on their balance sheet is going to be destructive in a deflationary environment. And I've been telling people, our subscribers, for a long time that the destination for these companies and their stocks is certain. It's zero. Only the speed is unknown. Uh, and so many people hold on to these stocks for their dividends because they're more less volatile, more stable than some of the stocks that we invest in. However, in my opinion, they are dynamite and I would go nowhere near them. All right. The last one that I would tell you, which is a move to make right now, which is obvious if you've sort of followed along the previous two, which is that you want to buy into innovation. You want to buy into innovation through growth, America 2.0, the fourth industrial revolution. And the basis for this is really the previous point that I made, which is that you're going to see huge spending happen 
for companies that make, that sell innovative technologies, and then for companies that utilize it to increase and optimize their products, to increase their productivity and services. And that's then going to make big money investors uh, who really are very, very underweighted if they have anything at all in these companies uh, in America 2.0 and the fourth industrial revolution companies, they're going to have to come and buy these uh, with their hundreds of billions and trillions of dollars and then bid them higher. And if you own those stocks, obviously those are going to be massive, enormous gains in your portfolio. So for our subscribers, you're already in. There's really nothing you need to do. Uh, just follow along with our portf model portfolios and Profits Unlimited and across our services. I am very, very BOP, as I like to say, bullish, optimistic, and positive. So it's been a difficult six months of a correction. How we're coming out of it, I believe our, our stocks are going to soar and skyrocket and our patience is going to be immensely rewarded. So that's my video for you this week. Come back next week and I'll have another one for you. Until then, this is Paul saying bye.